Hello everybody and welcome back to X-Plane 11. My name is Micah and today I'm going to be demonstrating a full flight in the Boeing 737-800 modified by Zebo. You all should be familiar with this aircraft at this point having watched my previous tutorials on how to set up different aspects and use different aspects of this aircraft. The idea behind this full flight demonstration is to show you how to fly the aircraft in a full flight from start to stop so that you can get an idea of how to combine all of what I've already taught you into one seamless flight. Now I will go ahead and say that as we all know in the simulator that things can happen. Uh, glitches, uh, things can be you know not in the correct position, things could not function properly. So I'm going off right at the beginning and saying if that happens don't fret. Uh, it's bound to happen at some point especially with the Zebo mod. Uh, it is not known for the most reliable, it has its quirks, but it is still by far the best freeware option out there in all of flight simulation. So, we are going to get started here with getting the aircraft started up from cold and dark. You will notice that uh, everything is set. We'll be flying from Seattle to Salt Lake City. The flight plan uh, will be in the description below. So I will be referencing that quite often and I highly recommend that you go ahead and download that flight plan so that you can follow along with me. I'll do my best to demonstrate exactly where I'm pulling the information from off the flight plan. I'll also be using a performance calculator which will also be linked in the description down below. I'll be using a checklist as well which will also be listed in the description down below. I have Navigraph installed, so my FMC data is the most up to date. It is the current cycle is 2003, so the third month of 2020. Or 2020. So 2003 is the current uh, ARAC cycle, and that's what we have installed. I'll be using the most updated charts as well, and we'll be doing this as close to realistic as possible. I will note that I am not a real pilot. So do not take what I'm saying to be reused in real world aviation at all. I am not an instructor. Do it at your own peril. Please do not use this in real life aviation. This is for the simulator only. So let's get started here. Let's get into the main pilot seat. And let's bring up my checklist. All right, safety inspection procedure. We're gonna start in the overhead panel. And we're going to make sure our battery is closed. Dome light, if we want one, uh, we can just, just put it on dim for now. Hyd electric hydraulic pumps A and B are off. Landing gear is in the down position. We have three green there, three green there. And bus transfer is closed. Right, right here, closed. So we'll do the fire test now, which is down here. Do fault in up test, fire test, wheel, engine when all that is looking good. If we look here, we should get a fire warning. We do have that. Perfect. And extinguisher test one, extinguisher test two. Perfect. Now we want to make sure that your GPU is connected. You have your chalk set in place. And we'll start, switch over to ground power. If you don't have ground power, you can't do an APU startup. Uh, that's very simple, and this checklist will walk you through it. Position lights are going to go to steady. Wheel light on. This is for the exterior in inspection of uh, the exterior inspection procedure. That goes into a lot of information, uh, some of which you can't really complete. So that's up to you if you want to actually do an inspection or not. If you don't, keep it off. If you want to, turn it on. We'll do a quick inspection. I'll probably bypass a lot of it, but uh, just to kind of show you how that works. Wing light would come on if there was an icy condition, but it's not, so it's gonna stay off. Logo light would come on if it was in darkness. We are currently in the day, so it's gonna stay off. Engine hydraulic pumps one and two to on, and electric A and B to on as well. All right, so now we do our exterior ins inspection of the aircraft. 
grab it back up. It disappeared when I switched out. And here it's bit, and here we go. So basically what you do. Let me get my free camera here so we can actually. You would start in a clockwise manner from the um, from the front here. So clockwise is this direction. Basically you do is you inspect these pro points and all of uh, those kind of outlets and everything to make sure they're clear and undamaged. Obviously in the simulator it's you can't really see that, so you just kinda you just go into the motion so to speak. Um, your static ports, vents and drained, and that's again you can't really do that because they're not really modeled. Um, but uh, anyway, so static points are you know clear, drained, etc. Road dome surface structures undamaged. This is right here. So this is your radar dome right here at the front to make sure it's not damaged. Um, you want to make sure that your lighting divert strips are secured. Four doors are good. Shocks in place. Uh, you want to make sure your tires are in good condition. Make sure they're not popped or low or anything like that. Um, make sure nothing's damaged under here. And you'll check all of the steering parts and everything. Um, again, just kind of going through this. I'm not doing this like, you know, super, super detailed because, uh, again, that would take, it takes a good good while, especially if you're new. Um, check of the probes on this side as well. Looks great. Static course, emergency window handle. Um, I don't, that's actually not modeled. Interesting. Normally it would be up here. Um, not seeing that. Interesting. Okay. Uh, doors, access panels, good to go, etc., etc. So you just continue on. You basically you check all the um, ports, all the parts on here. You check the engines, making sure all the fan blades are good, that nothing's damaged in there, nothing's floating around in there. That when you start up the engine, it's going to cause damage. You're checking your wheels, your hydraulics points, your flaps, your speed brakes, making sure all of those things inside of the aircraft are also good. You're checking to make sure there's. Um, all the connectors are in good working order as well. Check all your uh, wing surfaces. Check in all of your uh, little fins as well. Make sure they're intact and they're not damaged. You'll check your tail as well. Make sure there's no damage. Again, check in your uh, elevators as well. Your horizontal stabilizer, APU, APU door, uh, everything. Basically, you check everything on this uh, aircraft. You check. You know, you're checking the fuel, fuel vents, etc. Um, there's a lot to it, and um, if you want to get really, really in depth, you can do all of that. But uh, anyway, so I just wanted to show you kind of how you would go about doing that, um, checking obviously all your lights and everything like that. But uh, we're going to go back inside the cockpit here, um, as if we have completed the inspection and we're good to go. Now, by default, your aircraft's going to be perfectly fine. So you don't have to do your exterior inspection. That's up to you if you want to go that realistic route or not. So we're going to do wheel well light off. All right. We're going to open up our forward and aft service doors. And our cargo doors. All right, those are open. We'll go to our fuel payload. We're gonna set our fuel today, which is going to be 7,000 kilograms. And then we're going to ask the fuel truck to come and refuel us. All right, it is now refueling the aircraft. We're going to start services on the ground. Perfect. We're going to adjust our panel lighting here. I like my main panel to be bright. It's completely up to you. I do background up to the first little line here and it aphids flood light as well. Um, oops, that was supposed to be the overhead panel. Oopsies. Uh, I do bright all the way on everything that so um, emergency exit lights will arm those check the attend button ground call button we're gonna make sure our flap 
lever than the the trim adjust the zero position which it is zero position make sure it corresponds with our flap indicator it does takeoff config test left right good to go cargo fire test again making sure that fire uh, warning bell alarm sounds and shows Blood light. I'm going to turn it up just to there and panel all the way up. Fire extinguishers in place and in is full. P6 circuit breakers. These are all these right here. Make sure none of them are popped. None of them are popped. We're good. Mercy escape rope is in place. All right. Flight re recorder. Test. Then close. Off. Lock airspeed. Test one. Test two. Stall warning test one. Stall warning test two. Bike selector to flight. And IRS to nav left and right. And display select to heading and status. ELT is guarded. It closed. Emergency escape rope is in position. And the P18 circuit breakers. None of them are popped. All right, master lights, test. Make sure that we have all lights illuminated. I'm not having any broken bulbs or anything that we'll have to replace. It's good. All right, AP test one, test two. First officer, AP test one, test two, and back to bright. Pilot oxygen mask, we'll do a test, and then emergency test. Alright, main panel. Uh, like I said, main panel all the way up, bright to uh, background, bright. That's uh, just about right with that line starts, and same with that. If it's flood, but it's completely up to you how you want to um, adjust that. Totally up to you. Alright, those while steering is guarded. UTC time is selected, main panel DU is normal, lower DU is normal as well, weather radar is off, airport, to, where's the, there it is, on, rain radar on, barometric reference, we're going to select our current barometric reference, let me pull that up, it's going to be 29.99, we'll select that, 29.99, then our minimums. Today, our minimums is are going to be 1,500 feet, and this is our minimum flap retraction altitude. Get that by taking your field elevation, rounding it up to the nearest 100, and adding 1,000 feet. So, for example, field elevation here in Seattle is just over 400 feet, so you round it up to 500, and then you add 1,000 feet, makes it 1,500. All right. First officer, We're gonna test his oxygen mask as well. We're set his panel lights. We're gonna turn up his main panel all the way up. Make sure all these are guarded, and let's do a system pull. test. Pull up. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Same time, I'm gonna change time and date to UTC as well. Rain on. All right, fantastic. We're going to stop services now. And we'll close the service doors. And we'll open our forward entry door. So I can do aft entry today. Then we're going to go in here to the payload. And we're actually going to calculate our uh, payload, what it should be. We do know that we're going to have full up on passengers here. Go ahead and set all of these as such. Go back and let's see here. I know that my 
608 is 69463, based off my flight plan. And it's currently showing my tow weight uh, as three, uh, 63804. That's a difference of 5,659 kilograms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the next page here and see cat cargo forward, cargo aft, cargo forward. I'm going to put 2829 and aft 2830. And that's going to bring me to my tow weight of 69463. And all I did was took my uh, current tow weight minus my estimated tow weight minus my current tow weight, divided it by two, and then split it up between the two cargo panels. And boom, voila. Now we have our tow weight that matches our flight plan. And we're good to go. All right, so we'll go and start our flight leg now. All right, we'll go to the FMC now and start programming it. Make sure model is correct, engine rating is correct, nav data is the current, and active until March 25th, 2020. Perfect. All that looks fantastic. Go to position initial, and we're going to go next. Bring GPS left, bring it to the set iris position. Reference is going to be Seattle today. Not going to worry about the gate. And we're see we're really close to that last position, so we're actually pretty, pretty close to what we should be. It looks good to me. Route from Seattle going to Salt Lake City. Flight number today, I'm flying with Solaris Airlines, so 3007. And the runway we're expecting is 16 left. And all this is based off of my flight uh, plan. So we've got an origin destination flight number. Next, we need to do our actual routing. We're expecting 16 left for departure. The Suma 2 Arnav departure. Direct Wanta getting onto the Quebec 154 uh, airway. Getting off the Quebec 154 at the Bravo Yankee Ida VOR. The SCES 5 arrival. So, all we're going to put into this portion right here is direct wanta so w a n t a wanta direct then via quebec one five four to bravo yankee ida that's where we're going to leave right here in the route so we've gotten our airways and waypoint routing complete now we'll go to our departure select departure seattle and we're going to select our departure, which is the Suma 2. I'm not going to have a transition today. Just the Suma 2 tra the departure. And our arrival in the Seattle is going to be we're expecting ILS 16 right. And we're going to use the SCES 5 with the Bravo Yankee Ida transition. So we've completed that. Now we're going to go to our route and we're going to check it out. See if we have any discontinuities. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're good to go. We'll go to our legs, blade, legs page and double check that as well. Looks like we are rocking and rolling all night long. So fantastic. We'll activate that. Then we'll go to our performance initial page. And what we're going to do, we'll pull our... Fuel plate, our fuel weight, zero fuel weight from our flight plan, reserves, cost index, trip crews. Top of climb wind, ice deviation, transition altitude, etc. All this will be on your flight plan and your charts. Of course, here in the United States, transition altitude is always 18,000 feet. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Now, if you want to pull your actual gross weight in right now you can do that as long as you've loaded your aircraft by just hitting the l1 button automatically pull your gross weight and your zero fuel weight my reserves will be pull that up on my flight plan my alternate and final reserves add that together that's going to be looks like 22 so 2.2 as my reserves my plan today how much fuel will take me to get 
to Salt Lake City, plus 15 minutes contingency. Add that together, it looks like it's going to be three points, uh, 4.6, and that's rounded up, of course, so 4.6. My plan. And cruise today is 350, flight level 350. Cost index is 36, that's my based off my airline, my virtual airline I fly for. Uh, but uh, if you have it in set in auto, you'll automatically get that under uh, your first on the first page. It'll say cruise, SYS, or cruise system, CI, and then we'll have a number. Uh, today is cost index of 36, because that's again, that's what my airline uses. All right, next we are going to pull our cruise wind, and what we're going to do with that, we're going to go to our first waypoint, uh, past top of climb at 35, and we're going to pull the winds from there, so 262 at 59. And top of climb, OAT, so we'll go top of climb at 350, the outside temperature will be negative 59. Perfect. So we've completed that page. I've selected all that. Perfect. And we'll continue our overhead panel yaw dampener on. Don't have any center fuel, so we'll just turn on our left and right fuel pumps. Pick a cross feed valve. Perfect. Switch this to APU Gen. Fasten seat belts to on. Window heats on. Captain Hatcher on the fasten seat belt. Time we do all passengers. Take your seat at this time and please fasten your seat belt. System, make sure our oil quantity is over 76%. Our pressurization is over 28. Good on that. We'll select engine. We'll check our pressure right now. Pressurization system. Make sure that it is matching the current altitude and everything. It looks great and equal. No problems with that. Trim air on. We'll set our hot cab left one, forward cab center, right, or aft cab to right one. Next, we will turn on our packs. Left pack, right pack to auto. Make sure isolation valve is open. APU bleed should be off for now. Light altitude indicator to 35,000 feet. That's our cruise altitude today. Landing altitude, if we pull up a chart here, bring up Abby tab, which I use for all my charts, and pull up Salt Lake City. Elevation is 4,227, so we'll set that. Four thousand two hundred fifty. Logo light stays off. We're not in darkness. Uh, Ignition switch should be in the right position. Engine start switches are in auto. Good to go with that. Now we're going to set our course on our MCP to our SID. So I'll have to pull up my AviTab once again. Again, I use this for all my charts because I have Navigraph charts installed. AviTab uh, combines with them. So I'm going to pull up departure and oops not Salt Lake City I was confused for a second I need to pull up Seattle there we go departure Zuma 2 departure all right so from Seattle our heading would be a one looks like a 164 Yep, 164. So we set this to 164. 
that is a departing VOR radio out of the Seattle radio point 164. Flight, Captain Flight Director on, First Officer Flight Director on. Autopilot, just engage bars off and autopilot's off. Bank angle should be 25 degrees. Departure heading, uh, looks like the departure heading is 162, so we'll set that. Passed it. 162. Uh, initial climb, according to our chart here, it uh, looks like it's assigned by ACE. ATC. Uh, so our top altitude be assigned by ATC. There is no particular, you know, altitude that we would uh, have. So with that being said, uh, what I'll do is I'll put, uh, say, initial altitude assigned by ATC is 6,000 feet. That, of course, is completely a guess. It could be all kinds of numbers, uh, but that'd be assigned by ATC. But for today, I'm going to put 6,000 feet. All right, stand by. So we'll get rid of that for now. Stand by. Instruments right here. We want to make sure that our standby altimeter matches our local QNH, which is 29.99. Our standby RMI, we have selected ADF or VOR. We're going to be using VOR today. And that's because... I guess we'll, we'll select that in a second. Uh, we use VOR and we're going to be using... Can use a VOR departure if we need to. All right. N1 should be select to auto. Speed reference should be select to auto as well. Auto brakes RTO. Make sure that illuminates and goes away. Fuel rate, reset, then rate. All right. Now we can set our comms. We can leave that as is. Um, there's no real requirement for right now since I'm flying offline. But if you're flying online, for example, ACT like VATSIM or something like that. You need to set that appropriately. Now at frequencies. So if I bring back up that chart I was showing you. The VOR out of Seattle is 16.8. So I'm going to put that into my nav active on both sides. And again, this is for in case for some reason I have to fly a VOR radio out departure. I can do that. ADF frequencies, uh, so if this air airport was equipped with the ADF, um, we could use that. Uh, it may be equipped with an ADF, but I don't see one on... Yeah, I don't see one on the... Um, what do you call it? The uh, departure chart here. But uh, there may be one, but I'm not going to worry about it. Generally, I don't use ADF anyway. I always use VORs if I have to. Initial transponder code 2000, mic selector for first officer VHF2, and we'll go ahead and close the flight deck door. All right, we're going to check our route here, make sure that we are good to go, go to plan, and we're going to step through, make sure it all looks good. looks good to me I like it so with that being said we're going to execute the route all right instrument cross check make sure our clocks are the same 1533 Q&A 29.99 29.99 our flight directors are both on and our standby instruments have been set as well all right looks good there our expected taxi route today from Seattle. And we are not currently online. But our expected taxi route would be... Pull up the airport. Probably be taxied out of the north ramp onto uh, Bravo. And then Bravo all the way down to Charlie for 1-6 left. So Bravo, Charlie. That's what we can expect today. And our runway will be 16 left. Our departure will be the Suma 2 RNAV departure. We'll expect 6,000 feet on the initial climb. And then released to our, our cruise altitude. Alright, so we'll pull up our glare shield checklist. This will also be in the uh, 
description down below you guys can use. Before start, iris modes are in nav, gear pins have been removed, light tests have been completed, oxygen test is 100%, yaw damper is on. Now nav transfer and display switches are normal and auto. Fuel required, 6.7.0, uh, fuel on board is 7.2, it looks uh, 7.02 it looks like, um, so we're good there. Cabin utilities, all that is on. Uh, emergency exit lights are on. Fast seat belts on. Window heat on. Air conditioner press packs are on. Bleeds are set. Registration mode is auto. Instruments have been cross tracked. Auto brake is an RTO. Hydraulics are normal. V brake is down to detent. Parking brake is set. Stab, uh, stab trim cutout switches are in normal. Wheel well fire warning has been checked. Radios, radar, and transponder have been set at standby. Rudder and airline trims free at zero. All right, we'll stop there. We'll come back to it in just a second. We'll make sure this goes away. We'll do the welcome aboard, everybody, to the flight today. And we'll close our doors. All right, that's completed. If you are flying for a virtual airline, you might want to go ahead and make sure you've started your client. Make sure I've started mine. I have. Good there. And we'll go ahead and start our APU. Start our APU. All we're going to do, APU on, then start. Hold it down for five seconds. Once five seconds has elapsed, you release the start lever and it will start. It'll take about one minute uh, for it to start up properly. So you want to make sure that it runs for at least a minute loadless or you put any type of load onto the APU. So we'll wait one minute and we'll be back here momentarily. All right. Our APU has started up. Next, we'll start back with our FMC. A couple things we want to make sure. Make sure actual weight information is pulled and is correct and up to date. Uh, this is would be based off a load sheet, for example, that you would receive uh, that would say, hey, this is actually how much cargo you have on board. This is actually how much weight you have on board. And this is actually how many passengers you have. And it would be adjusted accordingly. Uh, we are going to be fine with what we are now, so we'll say we're good. Gross weight within flight plan range, um, which right now is 69.7, and according to my flight plan, that was the estimated. Maximum was 79, so we are totally within range here, so we're good there. And we'll go ahead and execute page one of performance. Go we'll overhead, turn on the APU bleed to on, turn on our middle APU generators. To on as well. Make sure our GPU is disconnected. Perfect. Go back to our FMC, go to N1 limit. We'll pull our um, outside temperature, uh, which I believe is plus four. Yep. And our selected temperature today, based off the performance which I ran uh, with this. AP Soft Airplane Toolbox, which of course will be linked in the description down below. Like I said, looks like we will do a selected temperature of 34 degrees Celsius and a D rate of T uh, 22K, 2 2, take off 2. So that is completed, takeoff is done, go to takeoff page, flaps 5, takeoff today, pull our center of gravity, trim is 5.5, B1 today, even though this is calculated, you can use these if you want, I use the performance toolbox here, so I get these from that, we'll input those, fantastic, speed bug, we we'll want to make sure that it matches our V2, which is 150. And we want to make sure our trim is set to our calculated, which is 5.5. Right about there. All right, we're not doing a cutback thrust option. This is not a, uh, they call a noise abatement procedure or departure we don't have one of those here in Seattle don't have to worry about it we'll go back to our checklist at our glare shield here and read where we left off FMC CDU is set in one at ISI bugs are not on set stabilization trip is set EFB 
airplane mode and stowed. This is the you can stow this away. I'm not going to for now because I'm going to have to use it. Phones off, flight deck windows and cockpit doors closed. Doors are closed, passengers are seated. Fantastic. Make that go away now. We get our IFR clearance to start up at this time from ATC. Don't have to worry about that today since we don't have ATC. And we would change our SID, initial altitude, transponder code, and all that based off of the ATC and what they are to sign us. Since we're not flying online today with ATC, don't have to worry about some of that. Anti-collision light to on. Just a little bit so you guys can see a little better maybe. Left and right packs to off. All right, we'll get our... Checklist over here. Before that, I want to go ahead and get put better pushback. We'll be linked in the description down below. We'll get this set up for my push and start. We'll push tail into the alley here. Round of cockpit plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Go and call him on the way. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. All right. Before start, you know to. Um, Read below the line. Air condition packs are off. Anti-collision lights on. Parking brake is set. Transponder is alt off. Make that go away. This time we would request push and start. ATC would grant us push and start or say hold or whatever they need us to do. So we got permission to push and start. And we'll start our push and start here on the ramp. And we'll come back with the engine start switches once we're actually ready to go. All right, we've been told we can release the push, the parking brake to start a pushback, so we'll release that. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right, pushback is started. So now we'll start our engines. We'll go to engine start switch number two to ground. And what we're gonna do here is monitor N2 and EGT. N2 we're looking for about 25%, and we'll add fuel. Five, add fuel. Watch an EGT. If it rises above 500 degrees, we will cut the engine back off as we had a bad start. And you got to cause an engine fire if it grows above that. So, I want to keep an eye on that. So, it looks like uh, we've had a good start. Watch an N1. We want that to be around 20%. I'll give or take a little bit. 19.1 um, is good enough. All right, and number one, go on ground. Again, watching the N2 rise. Look for about 25% on N2. fuel watching ECT making sure it doesn't rise above 500 operation complete set parking brake looks like it's stabilizing go and set the parking brake as they asked disconnecting tow standby I think we have a good start for engine number one as well overhead panel Generator 2 and 1 coming online. If you switch off, engine start switches to continuous. Probe heats A and B on. Left pack and right pack to auto. Isolation valve to auto. And AP bleed off. Just connect the hand signal there. We will wait now until. They give us the signal and show us they have the pin out of the front landing gear so we actually have steering on the ground. Kind of important. Once they show us that, over on, uh, they said it would be on the right. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. Yep, we'll on see the right. you next time and have a great flight. We'll wait for them to show us the hand signal and the pin over on the right side of the aircraft here. 
we don't do anything until they show us the pin. And because once they tell us, hey, you're good to go, it means all the ground personnel have been cleared from the area and the back blast of the jet engines and everything. And that way we don't injure anybody. Okay. You can see that he has a pin in one side, says remove before flight, and he's giving me a thumbs up. So we are good to go. Set take up flaps to five. We'll set that to five here. Make sure it reaches five appropriately. Good to go there. We go to the system here. We're going to check our flight controls. So our yoke here. We're going to go full forward on the elevator. Back to center. Pull back. Back to center. Pull left. Back to center. Pull right. Back to center. And rudders. Full left. Back to center. Full right. Back to center. Perfect. Recall. Uh, uh, first, uh, look, Captain and first officer side. Lower to you. We'll switch off, and the engines will move up to right here. And we'll bring up our checklist here again, and we'll do before taxi. Generators are on. APU is off. Start switches are in continuous mode. Anti-ice not required. Air conditioner packs are in auto. Bleeds are on. And APU bleeds off. Isolation valve is in auto. Flaps is required 5. Selected 5. Green. Good to go. Table trims 5.5. Required 5.5. Set. Start levers in idle and detent. And flight control has been checked. Oops. Just hit the flaps thing. My bad. And flaps 5. Green. Okay. Recall is checked as well, so we can make that go away. We contact ATC, get permission to taxi here, and they would give us our taxi clearance. But again, we're expecting Bravo uh, Charlie for that taxi. Taxi light on, left and right, turn off lights on as well, and at least that parking brake. We'll do a test of our horns here. No horn. All right. And we'll start moving here. Brakes look good. Now as we start moving, we'll switch our lighting to take off landing. Chimes only to on attend button and that's let the cabin crew know that we are set and ready to depart here so they can go ahead and do their safety briefing get that completed up get the cabin ready for departure and yeah, so we can get out of here soon little tip and trick on the taxi here if you have rudder pedals great if you don't uh, set your joystick if you have a Y axis if not, you might want to use some keys on the keypad or something like that to get your radar controls. Uh, but basically, you're going to keep the fire warning and the master caution right in between it centered on that line. And that's taxi line is basically going to give you um, a straight straight on the taxi. Now, you should also note a couple things here. First off, all turns should be made at no greater than 15 knots ground speed, which is indicated right here and all straightaways cannot exceed 25 knots on the ground as well on your turns there's a couple of ways that you can make sure that you stay on the line as you turn you got to kind of think of it like you're driving a bus because you have this long nose out but you got to keep your aircraft generally centered on it so what i do when i'm making a left turn i try to keep the line right here on this um gosh i just lost the word of it this pillar this pillar right here I try to keep it right here on this pillar I'm making a right turn I try to keep it right here in the middle of this window and generally that gives me a good a good turn left and right
Alright, we are approaching the runway now. <coughs> so, I'm gonna go ahead and kill my throttle here. Let me coast on the way there. And we're looking for the Charlie taxiway. This is Delta, so we'll be on the next one here. Find some brake here. All right. Position, steady, and strobe lights are going to strobe. Logo light stays off. Landing lights left and right turn on. Get this thing turned a little bit here. And we'll make a stop here. Alrighty. Fantastic. We'll bring up our checklist here. And it's going to be the... Or takeoff procedure. Here we go. Auto throttle, active. We'll do lateral navigation, vertical navigation, weather radar on, transponder, T A R A, and yoke checklist before takeoff. Config is good, flaps are green, stape trim is good, takeoff briefing complete, cabin is secured, MCP is set, transponder is T A R A, strobe lights and landing lights on. Alright, let's get out of here, guys. Let's take off. Let's get uh, just a little bit of throttle here to get us onto the runway. Make sure we're clear. No one's coming. Clear on the runway. Alright. A little bit of weather update there. Alright. ET activated. Rust stabilized at 40%. Let's wait for it to stabilize. Alright, stabilized. Toga is selected. A little bit of forward pressure on the yoke here. Eighty knots. Cross track, airspeed alive. Releasing that downward pressure. And D1. 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 Rotate. Rotate. Pull off nice, easy, gradual. We don't want a tail strike. And we'll bring it up to 15%, or 15 degrees here. Positive rate. Gear is coming up. 400. Flying that flight director. Fifteen hundred feet has been reached. So we can start retracting that those flaps here. And we'll bring them all the way up here. Now I'm still manually flying the aircraft. You could automatically have hit uh, the autopilot. But I like to fly the initial out point. I like to fly manually um, just to make sure that I'm still following the flight director and everything. And the aircraft's controlling the throttle. But I like to fly it manually just a little bit to make sure that everything's good. And besides... I didn't start flying a flight simulator just to let the autopilot fly me around. I like flying myself. Alright, we'll go and activate, activate the autopilot now. Let it fly. Landing gear can go into the off position. Auto brakes in the off position as well. 
Agent Star Switches, we're going to keep them in continuous here until we get above this cloud level. Generally, if you had a good visibility and degrees are uh, less than, or it doesn't matter, if you had good visibility, there's no visible moisture, you can turn off your engine start switches from continuous to auto. But since I'm below 10 degrees Celsius and there is some visible moisture here um, that we're going to be going to, oh, let's go ahead and increase our initial altitude. We'll go ahead and bring it all the way up to our cruise altitude of 35,000. Because I do expect to run into this cloud layer up here, I'm going to keep the continuous on until we're past it. Uh, once we break through it, then I'll turn it off. But uh, I don't want to turn it off for now, just to make sure that we don't have any issues. We want to check our pressurization. Cabin altitude is increasing, and differential pressure is this also increasing, and cabin altitude is increasing here as well. So cabin pressurization is good. Everything's good. ATC, I'll check it. Take off, air conditioning press set. Engine start switches have been set yet, but uh, so we'll put it, uh, put it right there. And this is why I wanted to keep them on, because of this right here. We are under uh, 10 degrees, so we're going to turn on our engine anti-ice to on. Just prevent any type of icing on the engines. Once we break through here, which it looks like we have just done, we'll turn the engine anti-ice back off, and now we'll switch the engine start switches to auto. All right, and this will continue all the way down. Flaps, yep, and altimeters set for now. Times only, we can release the cabin crew, let them start serving the passengers in the back. Just past 10,000 feet, landing lights come off, turn off lights off, taxi lights off. If you had logo lights and wing lights on, those would come off at the same time as well. Do another pressure check. Cabin altitude is increasing, different pressure is increasing, and we've got positive as well there. Fasten seatbelts can go into the auto. We'll recall, make sure we haven't missed anything here. Heading bug, we'll adjust with our track here. Do that little little white triangle on the MFD. That's what we're looking for. Altimeters remained in the local QNH 29.99 until we passed 18,000 feet, at which time we will switch over. We'll switch over the standard. But we'll keep this up. Let's check those up until we reach then. All right, we passed 18,000 feet, so we'll switch our barometric pressure over to standard on the primary and the alternate. All right, completed all that. All right, completed that. Bank angle at 30,000 feet. We'll switch over to 10 degrees, but for now, don't need that on. But we will continue to do as we fly, as we reach our waypoints, we will verify First, we'll set our heading to make sure it matches with the uh, heading little bug here on the MFD. We'll also check our fuel rate that and used fuel. So, for example, at each waypoint, and you can find that on your flight plan if you go down to I think uh, let's see page four on the flight plan. We're gonna look at the Suma waypoint. And you'll see where it says EFB and uh, PBRN basis estimated fuel on board and the estimated burn rate, basically, on how much fuel you burned. So we should have about 6,000 kilograms of fuel on board at SUMA, and we should have burned about one. So once we get there, we'll check that out. i show you guys that. So we're about nine miles out, so just hang tight. All right, we've reached SUMA. So we'll go ahead and do over here where it says rate flow, uh, fuel flow. Don't do reset. What you'll want to do is go down to used 
and it'll tell you how much you've used. So we've used uh, 1.2, uh, so 1,200 kilograms, so a little bit over what you're estimated to have used here on departure. Uh, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, what I've found is uh, sometimes that will be the case, and then you'll catch up during cruising. You'll actually make up for that fuel uh, burn, and usually, usually you'll be all right. So I uh, just want to monitor that, though, as you go to the next waypoints, making sure you know, you're going to arrive with plenty of fuel on board, and you're not going to be running into your reserves or your alternates or contingencies or anything like that. So anyway... Uh, this is where I will step aside until we reach our cruising altitude. Once we reach our cruising altitude, there's a couple more things we'll want to do. And uh, once we get there, I'll show you that. And then we'll probably zoom all the way to when we have our close to our top of descent. So I can show you guys how to plan for your approach. So I will see you guys once we reach our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. All right, we are reaching our top of climb. We're about 500 feet away. Once we've reached our top of climb, there'll be a couple things we'll want to do here. And then we will be set and ready to go for our cruise portion. All right, so here we go. We're gonna change our cabin lighting to cruise. Cabin lighting front entry area to white medium. And we'll make the announcement that we are leveling off. All right, basically that's it. All you're gonna do now is monitor all your systems, your fuel flow and rate uh, at each waypoint to make sure your heading is set appropriately. And you'll continue to monitor that all the way in. We're looking at a top of descent here in about uh, 300 or so miles. What we do want to do before you get too far into your cruise, and I can show you guys now, it, it, you can do it whenever, is you wanna go ahead and check in your legs page, legs page to make sure that your legs are showing the appropriate speed and altitude restrictions based off of the star, the standard uh, arrival routing uh, that you're getting here. So if we pull up our AVI tab again, so I can just bring up the chart here, and I'll show you what I mean. Not hard, not hard at all. Get rid of all that. We'll go to see uh, Salt Lake City, which is where we're heading. And arrival, and we're taking the Skis 5 arrival. So all we're going to do here is we're going to bring up the chart and we're going to make sure that based off the charts out to restrictions, we are obeying those rules. But we are going to be expecting to land south. So the first rule we have here is at skis. Uh, expect to be at 16,000 feet. So if we go here, we look, uh, it doesn't look like it's actually entered. Um, so that means we've got to put it in. So it's really simple. You go slash. 16,000 and I'll put it in skis we'll execute that perfect next we'll check our boot because that's where we're going to be heading next and 13,000 good hinky uh, 11,000 and looks like that's going to be the last out to restriction the rest will be the actual approach here which we can check again the same way bring up the approach page and we're expecting ILS 16 right so we'll bring that up And we'll look, and we'll check this, and we'll look, okay, let's see, at uh, Beehive, 7500, Bunker, 6000. And that's set appropriately, so we're good there. That's basically, you can do that whenever you want. Uh, I suggest you do it um, usually about halfway through cruise, or to at least 250 nautical miles away from your airport to make sure that your top of the set has been calculated correctly. Otherwise, you might run into an issue where... Um, your top of descent is way too close to the airport and you're going to have a dramatic descent rate. Uh, so I recommend doing that uh, generally about 200, 250 miles away from your airport. Um, so I'll pick this back up once we get close to our top of descent, probably about 100 miles from top of descent. I'll show you guys some other things you'll want to do before your top of descent. But besides that, you're pretty much in cruise. You can sit back, relax, watch some YouTube videos such as this one right here. 
Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. So we'll be picked up back at uh, near top of the set. So I'll see you guys then. All right, everybody. We are about a hundred or so miles from our top of descent, uh, about 110 or 115 or so. We're going to go ahead and start doing our pre-descent procedures as well as planning for our approach and arrival into Salt Lake City. First thing we want to do, go down here to the FMC, select DES, stands for descent, and we'll select forecast. What we're going to do next is we're going to set our uh, forecasted ISA, deviation, Q and H, altitude, and direction and speed of the winds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, I believe it's going to be page 6 of the FMC, I'm sorry, the uh, flight plan, not the FMC, the flight plan, and we're going to look at our descent column, and we're going to select uh, two 20,000, 15,000, and 10,000, and we're going to get the same direction and winds from those. So 20,000 is 288 at 23. 15,000 is 282 at 20. And 10,000 is 245 at 10. ISA deviation will be on page one of the flight plan. And that's going to be uh, minus six. I'm oh, sorry, minus three, minus three, flash, Q and H, look at Q and H, let me pull that up, it is 30.33, so three, zero, point three, three, and we'll put that right here, perfect, and execute that, and that's all been completed, next we'll go to fix, and we're expecting runway, one six right, And what we're going to put is slash 10, slash 4.5, and these are uh, distance from the actual um, runway, and that's going to help us with coordinating when we should drop flaps in different places. And then we're going to grab our, uh, the last one is going to be our estimated top of descent based off of just a rough uh, figure. So for example, we're flying right now at 35,000 feet. So 35 times three is 110. I think that's right. No, no, no. That's 105. So 105, then we add 10, like so 115. And that's gonna give us a basic three to one uh, ratio down. And then we're also going to have an extra 10 miles for that decrease in speed that we have to do at 10,000 feet. So 115, that's going to give us about, it's going to give us a ring here, and we can see we're really close to that top of descent. So we're basically where we kind of expect our top of descent to be. And that works great. So we are done with the fixes and the distance rings. Perfect. All right, so decision altitude height. We're going to go bring our charts up here. Salt Lake City, approach, ILS 16 right, make this larger so you guys can see it better, let's grab the wrong one, oh no, there we go, alright, we're going to look down here, our decision altitude is 4,423, so we'll set that in our barometric minimums here, 4,400. And what we're going to set is actually 40 feet above what it says here. That's going to give us time to actually, if we don't have the runway in sight, to actually make the go around without crossing that 4,423 feet. So 4,400 and, oops, not that, that's the wrong one. 4,463 is what we're looking for. So we've got that set. Nav frequencies. This will be our ILS frequency here. So we'll set that to 
Okay, we'll activate that. Set it on the first officer side as well. Perfect. Of course, according to charts, we're going to look here. 164. 164, 164. Perfect. Out to Bugrin just till our glide slope capture point, which is 6,000 feet. So we'll go ahead and drop this down to 6,000. Perfect. All right, get rid of that for now. And we're going to do a landing calculation using the AP Soft Airplane Toolbox. We're going to be landing 16 right. Pull the weather and some calculation. All right. Landing performance calculation is complete. We'll go to our performance here. I'm sorry, that's. Oh, where is it? Approach. All right, here we go. Approach. And what we're going to do is put in, we're landing at flaps 30. And our speed should be, uh, well, let's check what's the wind is 150 at 11. So that's 11 knot, basically a 10 knot headwind here. So we're going to bring up a little uh, wind uh, reference sheet here, which I'll also be linking in the description down below. And it's going to be 10 degrees off. And it's 11, so 6, add 6 on. All right. So what we'll do here is we'll go 30, and then 149 is the B ref, so we'll add 6 to that, so that's 155. Well, actually, it's the B ref we'll put here is, uh, sorry, B ref will be 149. And then wind correction will be 6. There we go. Auto brakes is calculated. Uh, we're going to use auto brakes two. Yoke checklist to sit. All set and ready to go. So once we reach our top of the descent, we can actually go ahead and make our change our lighting. Announce we're going to be descending, and then we will go ahead and descend. Until then, we'll go ahead and continue flying in cruise. So I'll see you guys once we reach the top of the descent. All right, guys, we are reaching our estimated top of descent here at uh, 115 miles away from the runway. Uh, if you look here, you can see that the actual top of descent is a good 10 miles past that. Uh, so what I'll do is actually I'll do a descent at the estimated, even though I'd probably be totally fine doing at the top of descent mark. I always just like having a little bit of extra uh, distance so that we can really monitor our speed a little bit better. So what we'll do is at about 115 miles, as you see here, on our descent, we'll select descend now. So we'll wait until we get close here. Descend now, and then once we hit that point, we'll actually execute that descend now procedure. We're waiting. Let me go ahead and execute that. So we'll start a descent. Same time, let people know we're descending. And we'll change our cabin lighting as well. So now we're descending. And so basically, on your descent, you're just monitoring your speed, uh, your rate of descent, making sure you're, you know, obeying all of the different speed and altitude restrictions on your arrival. Of course, if you have ATC, they're going to be giving you instructions on when to descend and so forth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and arm up the local altimeter of 3033. I'm not going to activate it yet, but go ahead and arm that up. So we'll continue our descent here. Once we reach about 18,000 feet, we'll have some more things we'll want to do. Um, so I'll see you guys when we get down there. All right, we're reaching 18,000 feet, which means we need to do a couple things here. We're going to switch our barometric pressure over to local Q&H. We're going to set that. It's going to bring us, tell us, hey, we're a little high. That's no big deal. We'll adjust accordingly. And we're going to set this to the local as well, 3033. And set. 
Yes, they have our similar to approach mode as well. Approach, all is checked. Approach and aids are checked and set. Again, I want to make sure 101.9, 101.9, both active for the ILS approach. At 10,000 feet, we'll go ahead and turn on our landing lights. So we'll have to wait till there. Uh, I wonder if we got it in sight yet. Oh, it doesn't look like it. All right. So we'll continue our approach here. Make sure we're meeting all those speed and altitude restrictions. And 16,000 feet at Skez. A little bit high, 100 feet high. But, uh, that's okay. All right. Should be a pretty easy right in approach here. <clears throat> here for yet. I doubt it. I can't get too far out. But uh, the vertical navigation will bring us in nice and easy. Just watching that speed, it's an important factor on your approach. I'll be using the ILS 1.6 right approach today, but of course, once I have the runway in sight and I'm a good and stabilized, I'll go ahead and deactivate the autopilot and take it over manually. Got the airport in sight now. We'll continue our descent here. over and we're gonna go ahead and add the speed brakes into it to slow us down we want to be 250 knots or below at 10,000 feet Landing lights, turn off lights on. Fast seatbelt sign to on. Not to HT, let them know we're here. And we'll let the crew know we're about to land as well. All right, we're now on vectors here. So we'll go ahead and select a heading select. Get us in line with the runway here. Go select VOR lock, and we are grabbing the ILS now. Speed come up, speed breaks up. 
and we'll activate the approach button as well. Captured the glide slope already, which is way ahead of schedule, but that is okay. We go and reduce speed to the flaps up speed. Time's only on, let them know we are going silent here in a way. And we're gonna use a little bit more speed brake here to slow us down. Flaps one. Try to go for about uh, flaps five at uh, the ten, 10 mile mark, but uh, sometimes you get there, sometimes you don't. Flaps two. Flaps five. All right, and we'll set it to the flat size speed of 172, it looks like. That's been completed. We're not going to use Command B. We're not doing a Cat 3 landing. Heading bug will adjust to the runway heading of 164. Altitude bug uh, set missed approach altitude, which if you check our charts here, they'll let us know. It's going to be 8100. 8,100 feet. And report we are establishing the ILS. Speed brakes to armed. And landing gear coming down. Flap set 15. Speed set the flaps 15 speed. Wipers not necessary. Engines 1 and 2 to continuous. Recall selected on both sides. Oop, a little bit of lag there. Alright, and our final approach speed today will be 155, so we'll go and set 155. And we'll drop the flaps 30. Taxi light on, clear the land. Alright. So you can fly in ILS all the way in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the autopilot and I'm going to fly it in manually because that's what I prefer. I'm also going to disconnect the auto throttle. And I'm going to manually adjust the throttle as well. One thousand thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Birch altitude set. Throttle, hold, hold, hold. Here we're down. Nose gear down. 
And reversers out, idle. Right. And reverse is closed. Auto brakes off. We'll manual brake till we get to 15 knots here. We'll take this taxiway off. All right. Once we're clear here, we'll clean up our aircraft with uh, speed brakes and flaps. We'll retract both of those. Speed brakes up, flaps up. Weather radar off, train radar off. Uh, first officer here. Lighting lights coming off as well. And position lights are going to steady. Transponder alt off. All right, move contact ATC, let them know we vacated the runway. So guys, that's kind of how we roll. Uh, that's how you do a flight here in the Boeing 737-800. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, I will leave you now with some footage of me landing. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget, guys, that I rely on you to continue to do this type of content over at patreon.com slash mnflightclub. For as little as $3 a month, you can get access to... Uh, Discord channels as well as some cool rewards including a flight club member patch uh, and a personal letter from me that I'll send with it uh, to you uh, and some other cool downloads and rewards as well so be sure to check all that out don't forget to subscribe like and comment if you have any questions and of course join the Discord the link will be in the description down below and that way you can communicate with me and ask me questions there hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time up in the sky <laughs>